Great, good afternoon. So my name is Chris Niggle. I'm the Director of Security and Compliance uh, at Okta. And with a title like that, you'd think that my job would be to keep Okta safe and secure. But if that were all, then I wouldn't be here. My job is the way I see it, my mission is the way I see it, is to provide secure identity services for everyone. And I'll start by asking you, here we go, what is your mission? So as you look at not just what you do, but the people that you interact with uh, every day, you, in doing your mission, you need to interact with dozens of people in other employees, customers, users, vendors. Our jobs are no longer done in a vacuum. They're done with hundreds, of, if not thousands, of other people. And the modern IT is just not set up for that. The way that we still look at IT, at IT traditionally is as a castle. Right? We focus on protecting the perimeter, building very strong, thick walls, protecting those with firewalls and VPNs, and only allowing users in if they know their secret password. Well, what's happened is that's created an environment where people have dozens of passwords. And we found that now customers, you know, we, we can't, as users, right, we can't remember all of those passwords. So we write them down. Uh, and as security people, we've encouraged this process because we've required them to do things like create 15 character passwords with letters and numbers and symbols and change them every 30 days. So that's on us. Right? And what's happened is now users write their passwords down. Or worse, they reuse them across multiple services. And that creates a phishing problem. So now when a user gets phished or there's a password breach at another company that may be completely unrelated to you, you have to do password resets across all of your employees because you don't know if they've reused that password in another location. So how did we solve this problem? We solved this problem with multi-factor authentication. Now everyone has a hard token that they have to use to get access. And then you forget your hard token on your desk and you can't do any work that day. So some enterprising young folks have put their hard tokens on webcams on the internet. <laughs> I think this kind of defeats the purpose of using MFA. Now, the adoption of cloud and the explosion of cloud has really just made this problem more and more uh, of an issue. In the last three years alone, just in the federal and education space, cloud adoption has gone up over 300%. And for some applications, we've seen numbers of four or 500%. So now, with all of these cloud applications that we're using to interact with others, we have more passwords, more identities, more multi-factor tokens that we have to deal with. And this problem doesn't scale. And that's because as IT has grown, we're no longer that castle in the middle of a field. IT is now like a modern city. So I was in London uh, a few months ago, and right in the middle of London, right, is the Tower of London. You have the castle protecting the crown jewels. And all around it is a sprawling city, a sprawling network of roads and tubes and other ways to get around and thousands, if not millions of people that are all interacting with each other on a daily basis. And this is what modern IT looks like. There's still a space for that hardened castle, for, that, for those walls, the VPNs, but we have to be able to interact with everyone around us. And we have to be able to do that using any one of a number of routes. So in London, if you want to get from one side to another, you can take a cab, you can walk, you can use a tube. We can't restrict someone to a specific method of travel. And yet in IT, we continue to try and do that, forcing people to use specific networks, specific routes, specific systems. And our users, again, they're very enterprising. So what do they do? When IT builds roadblocks, they just create shortcuts. Users are never rated on how secure they are. 
they're rated on how well they get their jobs done. So as IT and as security people, where we throw up roadblocks, they're just going to find ways around them. And when they do that, especially with identity, especially with usernames and with passwords, it causes big problems. When users write passwords down, they may forget them places. Or worse, they forget the password at a time of critical importance. There's got to be a better way. So we took a look at this problem. And when we look at all of the different people that we have to interact with, we look at all the different systems that we have to interact with, at the center of that is identity. When we put identity at the center of our security program, we now simplify all of these connections because we're putting our protections around the people. We're putting our protections around the data. We're not trying to build a fortress. We're not trying to build roadblocks that people are just going to escape from or get around. When you make identity your center, you now have access to a world of information that you didn't have before. We can use attributes about our users, such as who they are, what systems they're on. Is it a corporate managed or is it a home, uh, a home system? Their location, are they on our network? Are they on a trusted network? Uh, are they in the country or are they out traveling somewhere? And we can use all of this information from different applications. When you combine it all together, you now have the ability to create rule and risk-based decisions about access. So maybe if I'm in my office, I will get access to uh, the RHR system, right? Some of our core, really sensitive data, social security numbers, employee information, customer information. But when I'm out traveling here in DC, I should have no reason to access that. So why should I even be allowed to? With identity at the center, we have the ability to block access to specific types of data, not just detect it down the line and then raise a red flag. We've got the ability to identify when users are maybe trying to do impossible things. If I'm accessing one application while I'm in DC and I'm accessing a different application back home in San Francisco, that's not something that should be possible. So our identity system allows us to block that, to prevent it from happening, and not just detect that uh, using our, our SIM or our other log management tools. When it's already too late, the horse is bolted from the gate. Remember that screenshot of our multi-factor tokens up on the web? So that's because we put the wrong kind of identity in the wrong place. When we build roadblocks, our users find ways around them. And when we try and use multi-factor everywhere, then we cause more problems than we're solving. So I'll give you an example. I used to be a systems administrator. Uh, we had some issues with, with uh, remote access, so I put on multi-factor authentication at the firewall. Everyone had to use that for all of our cloud applications. So it was great, we were super secure, until our sales team started calling because they couldn't get into WebEx without their multi-factor tokens. Their multi-factor tokens were on their desk because they always leave them on their desk. Now, we're losing out on deals because our guys can't do their jobs. I put security in the wrong place. I used the wrong type at the wrong location. When we're focusing on identity, we now have the ability to use authentication that makes sense. If it's really sensitive data, let's use a biometric token or a cat card, something that's extremely difficult to fake. But if we're trying to access information that is less secure, is less risky, then we can use other systems, such as uh, YubiKey or OctaVerify or some other push notification to our phone. And although we're trying to get away from it, SMS is still leading solution for MFA because it works for nearly everybody. You don't have to download an app. You don't have to worry about IT knowing what's on your phone. You just get a text message and type in the code. So that may still work depending on your use case. And when we put identity at the center, 
we enable you to quickly adopt applications. Now, for the federal space, cloud has typically meant uh, infrastructure as a service, data center lifts and shifts and trying to reduce costs that way. But now we're starting to see the focus moving towards shared services, things like Office 365. And when we move towards shared services, now we're able to really uh, retain the cost savings in the value because everyone's not running their own mail infrastructure. We're able to host that in a single location. When we put identity at the center, we allow you to tie all of these apps into your corporate environment. We allow you to, to have one identity and quickly provision that across all of these applications and get people onboarded the day that they start. Or maybe more importantly, get them shut off the day that they leave. Now, we just talked about election security. And I can't think of a more identity-focused challenge than elections. We have the great benefit here of having uh, the right to an anonymous ballot, right, to a secret ballot. But we still have to uniquely identify and validate that every person who is voting is allowed to do so. So that, I think, is a core identity challenge. And as we look at modernization to our constituents, we look at modernization of government applications for uh, the general public to use. Providing a consistent and convenient user interface, a consistent identity across those applications is what our users expect. If you think about your Google account, right? One username and password gives you access to photos and mail and storage and maps and all sorts of services. And that's what our users are going to expect from us here in, in the public sector. A consistent identity across all of our applications, not a different username for filing my taxes and a different username for getting my medical benefits and a different username for registering my drone. So finishing up, I want to go back to the first question, right? which is, what is your mission? When we put identity at the center, we're able to take away those challenges, those IT challenges of building their, our castle, of creating the connections between our uh, constituents and our users and our vendors, and give you the ability to focus on your mission. Thank you very much.